Alrighty, folks, it's Farrell with the Joel Zone. We we come down to the Off-Road Expo, and who do we find but Mr. Trip Mitchell? Trip, what are you doing down here? Well, my TV station has some challenges. Every time that there's a raindrop, we go off the air. So I'm down here meeting some really great people who are going to drive me up the mountain every day to check on the TV station. So I'm, I'm here because I'm, I'm kind of smart. Well, I don't know about that, but um, let's go talk to some of the organizers, and, and maybe you can uh, get some help. I need more help, but Farrell, it's good to see that they let you out on weekends. You know, I, I tried to hire you for a gig on a Wednesday, and the people at the hospital <laughs> said that he pretty much five days a week inside, two out, and it's fun to see you out in the sun and, and having fun. I've been steady on my meds for the last six months. I'm pretty good. I can tell. <laughs> Can I get you guys' names? Phil Rawlings. Scott Phillips. And can you tell me a little bit about what it is that you've got going on here? Off-road expo. <laughs> so what would, what would possess you to do an off-road expo? What, what was the reasoning behind it? There's a bunch of reasons. One, this is Utah. This is off-road country. And we don't have an expo. That's just wrong. It needed to be fixed. So we fixed it. So you guys are the, the, the mechanics. Make, make the off-road expo happen. That's right. So there's to, another reason too. All right, what's that? That's because we need to be able to keep the trails and the access open for the Jeeps and the side-by-sides and the motorcycles. And if we don't all come together to support each other in all of our different efforts, then we're not gonna be able to have any place to go and we're gonna be looking at each other in a parking lot revving our engines. So I, I actually heard you this morning on the radio talking to um, Tim Hughes, and my son asked, well, well what is that whole tread lightly, tread lightly thing about? And I told him, you know, if these people just take their vehicles and drive everywhere, just one person not doing it's a big deal, but when you get 20,000 people, like you said, it's going to be a mountain with nothing. Everything's going to be gone. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of ruts, a lot of mud holes, no trees, no shrubs, but... Before that happens, they're going to ban us from being there to protect it. And it's hard to fault them on that. It really is. We need to be responsible. It's a lot of fun to go off-roading. It's a lot of fun to go tearing off through a mud puddle. But we need to be aware of what we're doing, and we need to do it in the right fashion and the right manner so that we can do it again later, so that our kids can do it, and so that we can go places and we can have beautiful landscapes to look at. The other thing that we need to do is we need to change the mindset. You know, like Phil was saying, you know, we all recreate together and we're all using the same land, but we have this siloed mentality of the Jeep guys aren't talking to the ATV guys and they're not talking to the motorcycle guys. And, and we're all using the same land and everything. The problem is, when we get involved in a land use issue, it's like the Jeep guy's like, well, that's a motorcycle area and we don't care about that. Well, we need to support them in that effort because if that area gets closed, they move to a different area and, and it becomes more crowded. The impact is greater and all of a sudden it's like, hey, this area is now being impacted. So we all need to team together. We need to educate, especially the with the explosion of the popularity of the off-road motorsports. Uh, so many people now uh, with the side-by-sides can buy a, a well-built capable rig and they go out and, and they just haven't learned they haven't grown up in the culture of tread lightly or how to do it and so we want to make sure that we help educate them on on how to how to responsibly recreate just just because the vehicle can do it you probably shouldn't right and the jk's i mean the jk's are super popular now Four too wranglers yeah so yeah you can make it up to the top of that hill but you probably shouldn't if the trail's not already there so, so be responsible people that's all it is right that's right so but nobody wants to come talk about land use right well i mean we do yeah yeah i mean it was more fun to talk about a motor than it is land use isn't it right <laughs> so that's what we did <laughs> They can bring everybody together. So the logistics of putting something like this together, I mean, you'd almost have to be insane to want to head up something like this, wouldn't you? 
I've never been accused of being the most mentally stable, so. <laughs> I, I, think our, I think our spouses are ready to certify us. <laughs> but it's, it's good they support you, right? Otherwise, you probably wouldn't My be able wife's to do this. been right there along with me the whole way. If I haven't slept, she hasn't slept, so. You know what I'd do? I'd just make my wife do all the work. I'd sleep, and then when the big day comes, take all the credit. <laughs> yeah. I've been married three times. Ma no maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> There's a correlation in there somewhere. It's weird. I don't get it either. All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. Good luck with your show. Hey, thank you. Yeah, go check out all the cool stuff. We will. We'll be down and check it out for sure.